everyone, it's Gina and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be talking all about humidity and naturally curly hair. We're gonna be covering topics such as humectants, anti-humectants, humidity blocking ingredients, and lots of sciencey stuff. And I'm also gonna show you a routine to humidity proof your hair for the summertime. So let's go ahead and get started. So just a little disclaimer, I'm not a professional hairstylist or a scientist or a chemist. I'm just a regular curly girl like you guys that is really passionate about naturally curly hair and science. So I do the hard work and the research to bring it to you guys and really simplify it. So I always include the sources and stuff down below if you guys are interested in reading up on any of them yourself. So the first step is to determine what your dew point is. And dew point is similar to humidity, but it's actually a different measurement. If you check the weather app for your location, you will see a dew point if you scroll down to the bottom if you're using the Weather Channel app. It's a little bit confusing and it's not necessary to know the details, but it's basically the temperature at which water vapor condenses in the air. So my weather app says that in my area right now, it is 73% humidity. So that's the water content in the air. That's pretty high. And it says the dew point is 60 Anything that is over 60 is when you're gonna have issues with frizzy hair and humidity. On the flip side, anything that is below 35 degrees Fahrenheit of a dew point is very dry conditions. And these tips and ingredients that I'm gonna discuss are also gonna apply for some drier temperatures. If you live in a range where the dew points are 35 to 60 degrees, then you probably don't have trouble with your hair and consider yourself lucky because this is the ideal range for naturally curly hair. The next step is to pick your products and read the ingredients labels. I cannot stress enough how important it is to read ingredients labels, especially if you cannot figure out why your hair won't behave. The more that you get used to reading ingredients and understanding which ones to look for, you'll be able to pick out which products are gonna be best for humidity, which products are gonna be best for dry weather and everything in between. So the first type of ingredients we're going to discuss are humectants. Humectants are ingredients added to our products to help bring moisture into our hair. And we know naturally curly hair loves having moisture. Our hair definitely needs moisture. It tends to be more dry and it can dry out very easily. I should also note that I do have high porosity hair. So because my hair is high porosity, it's very sensitive to humidity. If I go outside when I have just humectants in my hair and no sealing ingredients or no humidity blocking ingredients, my hair will frizz up immediately. It almost feels wet and soggy and it's like the products just evaporate from my hair. I have some notes here so that's what I'm looking at but some common humectants are glycerin, sorbitol, propylene glycol, and PVP. So these are humectant ingredients that are going to bring water into your hair. They work great at clumping curls, creating ringlets, keeping your hair moisturized. And glycerin is probably the one that you've heard about. I feel like it gets a really bad rap, but it can actually have some really great benefits to your hair. The downside though to using humectants is if you live in a very dry climate, they can actually dehydrate your hair. So if you're in very dry conditions, below 35 degrees dew point and above 60 degrees dew point, which is a very humid environment, then you would want to avoid humectant ingredients. However, there are film forming humectants, which are the ones that you want to look for if you still want to get those moisturizing benefits of humectants, but you don't want them to necessarily make your hair frizzy in humid or dry conditions. And I did read that film forming humectants are great for low porosity hair, but it can work on all hair types because they help hold in moisture. So they not only hydrate your hair, but they help reduce water loss from your hair. So they help keep your hair from getting dehydrated. So some common film forming humectants are flaxseed gel, seaweed extract, Irish moss extract, okra gel, aloe vera gel, pectin, xanthium gum, honey is another one, and hydrolyzed proteins. Hydrolyzed proteins act similar to film forming humectants in that they keep the hair hydrated and keep it from losing water. So anti-humectant and emollient ingredients actually help moisturize the hair but block moisture from entering. So these are ideal ingredients to look for in your finishing products when you're styling your hair in humidity. So a common anti-humectant is silicones, but we all know that silicones tend to build up on the hair and they can actually prevent moisture from getting in your hair. So it could potentially dehydrate your hair over time if you're not using water-soluble silicones that can be rinsed out in your shampoo. Some other ones are shea butter, esters, hydrogenated castor oil, beeswax, and any type of plant triglyceride. So these are silicone alternatives that kind of act in the same way that they help block out moisture, but they're more natural and not as synthetic. So some of those plant triglycerides are coconut oil, palm oil, olive oil, and shea butter. So these are probably the most common ones that I see a lot in products. Some common emollient ingredients are butters, oils, esters, lipids, and fatty acids. So these hydrate the hair, but they can be a little bit heavy on the hair, especially if you have very fine, 
light curls, then things like shea butter and castor oil could potentially weigh down your hair. So some other ingredients that help seal and lock in moisture are oils or occlusives. So occlusives are ingredients such as oils that can be anything from vegetable oil, plant seed oil, mineral oil, petrolatum. So when you use oils as the last step as your styling routine, they sort of waterproof your hair. But it's important to look for oils that are actual sealing oils and not penetrating oils because penetrating oils soak into your hair so they might not do as well at actually blocking moisture, but sealing oils are ones that will actually help lock in that moisture and block other moisture from entering in, such as humidity in the air. So sealing oils include hoba hoba oil and rice bran oil. So the next group of ingredients that I want to talk about are polymers and polyquat ingredients and emollients. So these help to actually block out moisture. So polymers and polyquats tend to be synthetic ingredients. So some of the most common ones that I've seen in products are polyquaternium or polymers. Many believe that these tend to build up on your hair over time. So if you're going to be using humidity proof ingredients, just make sure that you are clarifying frequently. I personally like to clarify every other week because you don't want these to build up on your hair because just like silicones, they could prevent your hair from getting moisturized and dry it out over time. Plus your products are just not gonna soak in and your hair could get weighed down, especially if you have low porosity hair. Make sure you're clarifying on a regular basis when you're using these type of ingredients. I'm not afraid of using them though, just because I would rather have humidity proof hair and not have frizz, so I would rather just clarify more frequently. So now that we've discussed the different type of ingredients to look for in humidity and ingredients to avoid, now we're gonna put it all together in the actual styling routine to humidity proof your hair. So I like to do a two to three step styling system. I've talked about this a lot in styling videos before, but it's basically moisturize, seal, and then finish. Some people say like prep, moisturize, and then seal, whatever you wanna call it, but it's basically where you use humectant ingredients and moisturizing ingredients in your leave-in or your cream, and then you use a gel or a mousse as your sealing ingredient to give yourself hold, and then the finisher or the other sealer would be an oil or a hairspray to just lock everything in. So for the styling routine, I'm actually gonna be using Bounce Curl products. There's a lot of different hair products that I like to use for humidity. I will be sure to list out some other ones as well on this blog post, but I've been testing out Bounce Curl, so I'm first gonna start off with the Bounce Curl Moisture Balance Leave-In Conditioner. The reason I am using a leave-in conditioner instead of a curl cream like I typically do is because in the summertime, your hair can often get more weighed down. You might not need as much moisture since there's so much moisture in the air, so something like a leave-in conditioner can give you light moisture. You could even skip using a leave-in conditioner or a curl cream and just go straight to gel or mousse. I've definitely done that sometimes, but my hair can sometimes dry out on next day hair because it is high porosity. It tends to lose moisture very easily on next day hair and I get frizzy limp curls. So having that moisture layer as a base layer and then sealing it is the best styling routine that I have found for my hair. Let's take a look at the ingredients in this. So this is a protein free leave-in conditioner. So it's gonna give me balance between protein and moisture because the gel I'm gonna use is high in protein. So the first ingredient is water, which is awesome. Then we have cetaryl alcohol, which is a really good moisturizing alcohol. So it's gonna bring moisture to the hair. Then there's hoba hoba seed oil, olive fruit oil. There's some butters in here, argan oil, shea butter, avocado oil, rose oil. Lots of really great moisturizing ingredients. So I know this is gonna give my hair the moisture and the slip that it needs to style. Then I'm gonna be using the Bounce Curl Light Cream Gel. This has aloe vera in it, which we said is a film forming humectant. So it's not a gel that's going to totally dry out your hair. It is still moisturizing. So the ingredients in this gel are water and then VP slash VA copolymer. So that's one of those humidity blocking ingredients that are going to help repel water from your hair. Then the next ingredient is glycerin. So you might be wondering why are you using a glycerin product as your last product and that is because it does have the copolymer before it. If you didn't know, they always list ingredients in concentration. So the ones at the top are always the most concentrated in the product and then it decreases as you go down the list. So copolymer is listed before the glycerin. So I know that it is balanced out because they have paired it with those other ingredients that are gonna help block the humidity. However, if you're somebody that is very sensitive to glycerin, everybody's different. Some people's hair totally freaks when they use glycerin in the summer, then I am gonna share with you some other glycerin-free gels in just a minute. The next ingredient is hydrolyzed hoba hoba esters. 
jojoba hoba esters, hydrolyzed wheat protein, hydrolyzed oat protein, and then the aloe vera leaf juice extract and some other moisturizing oils. So the fact that it has those proteins in it are gonna help hold that definition in your hair. So it helps give your hair really great hold and bounce so your hair is not gonna fall flat in the humidity. So I recommend applying gel to your hair in sections. It really helps to fully coat your hair in gel. I also use quite a bit of product just because I know I want a strong hold. You can always scrunch out the crunch later, but it's good to try and get that hard gel cast in the first place. So I'm using quite a bit of gel. I also have some water on my hands as I'm kind of scrunching that throughout the different sections. So once I'm done, I'm just scrunching out a little bit of the excess water using my hair repair towel, which doesn't cause frizz or anything. I also like to kind of do the open palm scrunching method, so I'm not really curling my fingers in, which is going to help prevent frizz. If you really don't want to remove any product, then I would skip this step, but Drying time can take a very long time when you're diffusing if you don't remove the excess water, so I highly recommend doing that. But my favorite thing to do is remove some of the excess water and then go in with another layer of gel. So once I do that, I'm just adding more of the light cream gel to my hands and kind of doing a light glaze layer over my hair. And just having that extra layer is gonna give me even more frizz protection. And you can also kind of spot define certain areas with a little bit of gel and water. If you notice any areas got frizzy, my ends always tend to get frizzy. So another tip is to use a sealing oil like this one from Briogeo. This is the Don't Despair Repair Strengthening Oil Treatment. So this oil I like because you can use it on wet or dry hair. I normally don't go for oils as a finishing product because I like a really strong holes and I find that sometimes they can break up the gel cast. So I always kind of steered away from oils, but this one in particular doesn't break up too much of the gel cast, especially when I use it on wet hair. The reason I'm adding it to my ends is because my ends get so frizzy when I diffuse. I try and not touch my diffuser to my hair, but because they're very high porosity and damaged on the ends, they tend to lose moisture and dry out very easily. So adding that oil layer is gonna lock everything in and prevent my hair from drying out while I'm diffusing. So now I'm gonna go ahead and diffuse off camera. Y'all have seen me diffuse so many times and I do have a video all about how I diffuse without getting frizz. I definitely recommend diffusing over air drying in the summertime because air drying can take so long in the summer. Even if it's hot outside and you think your hair might dry fast, it won't because there's so much moisture in the air if you do have humidity that it's just going to slow down your drying time and you're probably gonna get frizz as your hair is air drying. Even if you air dry inside, I feel like it just takes so long that you're moving around and stuff and that just causes frizz. So for me, it helps to really lock in that gel cast right away by diffusing. I don't diffuse when my hair is soaking wet though. I usually let it sit for like five or 10 minutes or you could plop with your hair up in a towel just to absorb some excess moisture before you go in and diffuse because you don't wanna diffuse soaking wet hair or else you'll be there forever. So this is how my hair looks when I'm done diffusing. I have a great gel cast, but it's not too hard and crunchy. I think because we did scrunch out some of that excess water. So it didn't get too crunchy, it's just the right amount. I am gonna fluff out my roots a little bit. That just helps give me more volume, but I don't recommend scrunching out the crunch too much. If you leave some of that gel cast in your hair, that's the number one way to help your hair last longer throughout the week, and it will help protect your hair from the humidity. It will gradually fall out throughout the day as you're moving around, so you don't have to go around with crazy crunchy hair, but it'll just help your hair last a lot longer. So I definitely recommend just leaving in some of the gel cast. I just gave my ends like one or two scrunches and I left it at that. Sometimes I will go in with a little bit more of the Briogeo oil, but I don't think I'm gonna do that today just because I want to show you guys this hairspray from Bounce Curl. So as I mentioned, hairspray is another form of a sealing ingredient because it helps lock everything in. This is the number one way to get a very strong gel cast. So this is from Bounce Curl. This is the alcohol-free hairspray. Definitely wanna find an alcohol-free hairspray. Alcohol in ingredients are often found in hairsprays and mousse and gel, usually cheaper ones, and they will dry out your hair so bad, especially hairspray. You don't wanna have dry, hard, crunchy hair. I also like that this is a water-based hairspray, so it works great for naturally curly hair. So this also has a copolymer ingredient and polysorbate, hydrolyzed wheat protein, virgin black cumin oil, so it's not drying on the hair or anything, and it has other extracts in it. But that copolymer ingredient is what's really going to block out humidity. You can definitely get a very strong hold with this but if you hold it a little bit farther away when you spray it and don't spray too much a little goes a very long way and you want to hold it farther away if you don't want to get too much of a cast if you spray it too close you'll end up with a hard crunchy area so that is a surefire routine to make sure you don't get any frizz I'm gonna be outside today a lot it's gonna be raining and storming some and I'm gonna be sitting outside so I will definitely be putting this hair to the test I will definitely try and update you guys tomorrow 
tomorrow morning so you can see how well this held up on next day hair. Hey guys, so it's the next day. I was outside. Let's see how it looks. I'm gonna take it down out of the bonnet. So overall, it still looks really good. Looks like I have a little bit of frizz happening like through this region, but nothing that I couldn't just touch up some water. And the nice thing I like about the Bounce Curl Gel is you can just add a little bit of water and it usually reactivates, but I feel like I still have really great volume. My grays are showing through, but I still have a really good cast on my hair. So I can definitely feel where the hairspray did hold because I can still feel that hold from the hairspray. So now I'm gonna talk about some other products that I recommend as sealing products that are going to help block humidity and also some glycerin-free gels. I feel like the sealing step is the most important, so you could really use any leave-in or any curl cream, but that final product that you use for hold is what is most important to get one that's great for humidity. So this is another one that I love. I always rave about this one. This is from Weedad. This is the Advanced Climate Control Heat and Humidity Gel. This is the stronger hold version in the red bottle. They do have a white bottle, which is a lighter hold, so if you don't like as much hold, you could go with that. This gel actually has glycerin as the second ingredient, but it has a bunch of anti-humidity ingredients like polychronturnium 11, PEG 75 shea butter glycerides, wheat amino acid, hydrolyzed wheat protein, cross polymer, so many different polyquat and polymer ingredients. So this is loaded up with humidity blocking ingredients. This is also awesome if you have high porosity or damaged hair because the um, film forming ingredients create so much slip and it's a very watery gel texture. So it's very easy to work with and get through your hair, especially if you have fine or lower density hair and you don't want to use a thick gel, this is a great option. But like I said before, just make sure you're clarifying at least once a month when you're using those polyquat ingredients. So here is a mousse that has the polyquaternium in it. This is the Not Your Mother's Curl Talk Curl Activating Mousse. A lot of times products will also say they provide humidity protection. On the front, this says long lasting definition humidity protection for frizz free curls. It says it's a soft touchable hold level two, but you can definitely layer this up and use more and get a stronger hold. I would consider it more of a three to a five hold. So this has polyquaternium 46 as the second ingredient. These ingredients are not as natural. Like I said, these are synthetic ingredients, but I don't usually get frizz in the summer when I use this, so it is a good option. This is one I recently reviewed in a video. I reviewed the whole collection. This is from Trey Lux. It's an all natural brand. This is the High Definition Curl Enhancer Styling Gel. So this gel does not have glycerin. It has aloe vera leaf juice as the second ingredient. Then it has propylene glycol, which is a humectant ingredient. It has keratin amino acids in it, so it does have some light proteins. But that aloe helps give your hair hold and helps keep the moisture from escaping from your hair. So it's not your traditional humectant, it is the film forming humectant, but there's no glycerin. So if your hair is super sensitive to glycerin, then you might wanna check this one out. Last but not least is the Innersense Eye Create Hold. This is a strong hold styling gel. So this product does contain glycerin, but it's pretty low on the list. It also has the cross polymer, so it's gonna help block humidity, and it has the aloe gel, which is going to be a film forming humectant. So a lot of times when glycerin is very low on the list, then it usually doesn't affect your hair as much as glycerin being one of the top ingredients. And aside from the aloe leaf juice, this also has honey, which is another film forming humectant. So that is all the humidity proof products that I wanted to mention. If you have any products that were great in humidity, definitely let us know in the comments down below. I'm going to summarize all this information and list out ingredients for you on the blog post that goes with this video, which is linked in the description box down below along with all the products that I suggested. I also currently have a huge giveaway going on on my YouTube channel and Instagram. It's going on until July 6th, so if you're watching it before that date, definitely go enter it. I will have the link down below for that video. These are two products that are actually in that giveaway, the Curl Talk Mousse and the Briogeo Strengthening Treatment Oil. So that's it for today's video. Please don't forget to subscribe if you have not already and I will talk to you in next week's video. Bye everyone.